Nostalgia. Hello. Hey, Ty. How are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm feeling good. Just got to hear some Final Fantasy VI music. Brought back some. Oh, uh, nice, nice. Some childhood memories. I never got to play that game. You should uh, make it a point to go download an emulator, uh, or buy a Super Nintendo legally, and <laughs> somehow acquire Final Fantasy VI. Fantastic game. Right on. Yeah, I've actually wanted to pick up Super Nintendo here for a while. It is uh, it's probably the best system ever, if I may say I, so. I definitely agree. Some of the some of the greatest games of all time on there, including uh, Una Racers and uh, Tetris Attack. <laughs> okay, see, I've never played either of those. Oh my God, you have missed out on so I many know. gems. I was more like Super Mario Brothers, Mega Man. Of course. Super Metroid, yeah, Bitter Done is exactly right. And then, uh, what is it, A Link to the Past? Probably the best oh, Zelda oh game man. ever. That game. <laughs> so. so many hours of my childhood gone. I know, I know, I know. We could we could talk about it for ages, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk StarCraft. Definitely. So uh, let me just make sure that everybody can hear you. Oh, Chrono Trigger, yes. Uh, oh, man. Earthbound. <laughs> so many good games. All right. That's no, we can uh, we can take some time maybe after the lesson to talk about old Super Nintendo <laughs> Super yeah. Nintendo games that we all love. Um, uh, let's uh, let's start things off with some. Uh, well, first let me make sure that people can hear you. Okay, can you guys hear Ty? Can you guys hear me? Are we in good shape? Double thumbs up everywhere. Come on, stream. Don't let me down. Run says yep. Starve says good. Run says monkey face. Cowabunga says go. yes. All right. I will make the pirate smiley because it is the best smiley. <laughs> okay, Ty. Well, uh, if, you've, uh, if you've ever seen me do this before, you know I like to start off with some introductions. So just tell us uh, who you are, uh, a little bit about yourself, maybe uh, a little bit about your RTS background, and mostly uh, the level you're playing at and what you want to work on today. What do you What do you really want to get out of this this lesson? Okay. Uh, my name is Ty. I currently live in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm 22 years old. Um, I've been playing StarCraft since, I think, September. Um, I've never played an RTS before, played a lot of Halo, played some other computer games back in the day. Uh, it's a really good game, so I'm really happy to be playing it. And um, I currently am in Platinum, trying to move up and get better. Nice. Yeah. Platinum um, is, a, is an achievement for somebody that's never played an RTS before. Yeah, I feel, I feel good about it. I think I'm currently plus 55, so that's all that really matters to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I would really like to work on ZBZ today. Great. That makes my life easy because uh, I have a lot of Zerg players that watch the stream that can come play with us. Yeah. Um, the other two matchups, I mean, I'm not saying by any means I have a full understanding of them, but I just don't lose a lot on the latter um, in ZBT and ZBP. But ZBZ, I really, I don't know. Um, I feel good about it but not great about it. And when I do lose, I feel absolutely helpless. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly how you feel. I remember... When I was, uh, the first time I ever had Machine come on the show, it was to talk about ZVZ, if I'm, re if I'm recalling this correctly. Um, and at that point, I was probably 18, 1900 diamond, and I felt like I was winning 
all my ZVPs, and I was doing okay in my ZVTs, but ZVZ just felt really hopeless to me. And I actually remember I opened up my replay folder and I counted my last 50 games. And of those last 50 games, like 36 of them were ZVZs. Yeah. And of those 36 ZVZs, I only won like seven. Oh, that's bad. You know. Yeah. So um, I have been there. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I play a lot of ZBZ on the ladder. I don't know if more kids are playing ZBZ or if it's just the maps I have thumbs down. Um, I'm playing a lot of ZBZ. So. Well, uh, in my opinion, and you can take this however you like. Absolutely. Um, I feel like uh, around uh, around platinum level, where, where you are kind of right now, up through uh, low masters, is where a lot of Zerg players get stuck. Yeah. And because of that, I feel like there's a higher concentration of Zerg players around that rank, because Terran players and Protoss players just keep doing what they've been doing, four gates and, and two base two all ins <laughs> and, and things like that, and they just keep on winning. And Zerg doesn't really have that easy mode thing that they can fall back on, so you, it, you end up with a lot of uh, the Zerg population kind of around that rank, in my opinion. I don't have any statistics to back that up. But that is just... I would no, 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 I, I would believe, believe it. That that's fairly accurate. A lot, a lot of Zerg players kind of stuck around that rank, and then they all end up playing against each other, and they all end up hating ZVZ. <laughs> See, I actually really like ZVZ. Um, I think it's really fun. It's just uh, very challenging to me. Uh, yeah, well, it, it can be challenging. And, uh, and, and one thing that we're, you're going to hear a lot about today as we talk about this is timings. Um, and uh, when we walk away from this, I hope that you have a fundamental understanding of the timings that exist in ZVZ, because they dictate everything. They dictate when you're safe, they dictate when you're in danger, they dictate when you attack, and they dictate when you drone, they dictate when you expand. It all comes down to timings. Gotcha. And uh, that's going to be based off of uh, our gases, and it's going to be based off of... Uh, busting out the notebook there, Ty? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's going it, huh? <laughs> to be based off of, uh, you know, it's going to be based off of things in our build order that work as indicators for us and benchmarks for our own personal timings. So, um, so I have to ask, uh, how do you generally play your ZVZs? Do you have a style that you prefer? Um, I used to really like Wing Baneling Micro. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying I'm good at it, but I, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, that's partially because when I was really bad, I only knew how to make Zerglings, mm -hmm. so that kind of carried over. Um, I like to go 50 hatch, but I have a hard time holding it against early pressure. Mm -hmm. And then lately, I've been doing a lot of speed and expand. Good. Because I can then go Ling Baneling, or I can throw down a hatch. Um, and then, for some reason, I play a lot of Shakura's Plateau, ZVZ. Mm -hmm. um, so I get into these mid-game situations where I have a ton of roaches, and they have Roach Hydra. Maybe I have Infestors, and I, I feel very confused on what my army composition should be. Because um, I feel like Hydras do really well sometimes, and other times they do terrible. Mm -hmm. Infestors, I don't really know. So, yeah. Well, um, I like that you're going speed league expand for starters. I think that's a, f a fantastic place for you to be uh, basing your play. Uh, and and I'll, I'll get back to your question directly in just a second, but I want to talk oh, yeah. a little bit about that. Um, I, as you play more and more and more, you're going to develop a style that you like in ZVZ. Um, Rhett's style is 15 hatch roach. And I don't yeah. know how the fuck he makes it work, but he can do it on any map. And it just bl boggles my mind how yeah. he can make 15 hatchery into straight into roaches, how he can make that work. But that's it's, that's Rhett. That's what works for him, and that's what he does. Uh, uh, Idris' style, if you watch much of his stream, is very speedling expand-centric. Uh, Machine uh, has been talking a lot lately about how he's kind of moved into a one-base roach style. And, and then me, I prefer like a one-base baneling style. So you know, every player is going to have things that they lean to in terms Kay. of what they're most comfortable with. But I think Speedling Expand is the safest, best, most stable thing for you right now. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, so uh, your question was, you said, I play a lot of Shakur's Plateau, and sometimes I get into these mid-game situations, and I just really don't know what units to make. Yeah. Um, and the answer to that is roaches. It's just, it's just roaches. Uh, okay. you, your mid-game is going to be dominated by roaches. So I've thought that, but I keep losing to Roach Hydra. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, well, you will. So, I mean, well, I, I shouldn't say that. Uh, you know, Roach Hydra, uh, there are so many schools of thought here, and I don't think anybody is, is exactly right or exactly wrong when it comes to Roach versus Roach Hydra versus Roach Infester versus whatever. Um, when Roaches, when he has Roach Hydra and when you have Roach, and when his Roaches function as a buffer between your Roaches and his Hydras, those hydras become amazing. They do six sick yeah. damage, and it just—it's—it's it's awesome. Basically, doing damage for free. Exactly. Uh, any other time, any other time, when you get position on the hydras and and you engage them directly, they're going to melt and they're going to feel completely like wasted money, like a bad investment. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> the lesson here isn't in roach hydra is good, roach hydra is bad. The lesson here is in positioning. Okay. It doesn't matter what you make, and you can quote me on this. <laughs> Actually, no, don't quote me on that. Because <laughs> if you just make Ling Hydra, you're going to fucking fail <laughs> in, in ZVZ. But, but typically, in, in regards to this Roach Hydra question, it doesn't matter what you make. What matters is how you engage. ZVZ, okay. more than any other matchup, is about positioning. And as a Zerg player, you should be worried about positioning all the time anyway. Yeah. Um, so more than whether or not you're making Roaches or Hydras, more than whether or not you have Infestors, though Infestors are important, and we'll talk more about them later, more than any of that, uh, your success in ZVZ is going to come down to whether or not you engage in a, in a, in a position that is to your benefit. And that means uh, having a large concave. And that means having a larger concave than him. And if, if you don't know what I mean when I say concave, it just means having the most shit firing. No, yeah, I do. Um, that's actually why I feel so challenged on Shakur is because the middle of the map is so big. It's huge. And uh, and that is where kind of the infester comes in. Um, gotcha. So yeah, I would definitely say that I'm not utilizing my infestors anywhere close to maximum potential. They are literally the single most instrumental unit in mid late game ZVZ that there is. Period. The only gotcha. unit in Zerg versus Zerg that might be better than the infester is the Broodlord. Okay. Uh, um, and still, that's a maybe. And